Buenos dias and welcome to another episode of the Godfather, Godfather Minute. Minute. I'm Alex Robinson. I'm Andy Robinson. And together, collectively, we make up the hosts of the, the show. show. Today we're talking about minute number 19. Alex, repeat after me. E minuto. E minuto. Numero. Numero. Diciannove. Diciannove. You got it. Got it. 19. No, 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 19. You remember that song? No. Oh. Ah. It was uh, like a song about Vietnam in the 80s. Huh. It was, it was basically like a uh, instrumental track, except for like a, a newscaster talking about stuff that was going on in Vietnam. And oh the, average, the average age of the soldier in Vietnam uh, was 19. And so the song was called 19? It was called 19. In, was World like War, a- in World War II, the average age was like 25. Oh my gosh. Wow, 19 was the average age the average is that age. true That's or is that just the song no i think it is true how can that be i don't know most most of them 18, i guess 18, 19, 18, or 20. 18 19 or 20 right yeah because you can't go below 18 yeah though i'm sure some stuck in there but crazy it does think i guess the, the biggest chunk were probably 18 19 or 20. and so the song was was um was like a dance tune you made it sound like it was electronic yeah, nine, it nine, was nineteen. Yeah, kind of like that. Like a s- sampled newscaster is mm. going like Saigon, Saigon, and, and oh gosh, I don't interviewing that. some guy. I didn't even know what was going on. You know, like that's it's a, a, it's a, his, it's a EDM uh, history disguised as an EDM song. Yeah, I, I wish more um, people had continued that uh, that genre because it yeah. could be basically like educational, but have it with a with a nice beat. Well, you're particularly into EDM, right, Alex? Sure. I I noticed that EDM does not use vocals very much. Uh, some do. Some t- yeah. sometimes they do. Um, would it then be become? Would it not be EDM and it would now just become dance music or house music? If no, there I are think more it's vocals? still as long as it's mostly like a like. I mean, obviously, most music this, these days is electronic, but yeah. as long as it's still largely, you know. Something created on a computer, as opposed to. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I don't recall. I've been to a just few dance EDM music. shows. Doesn't say instrumental music. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't recall many vocals besides Lou. Can I hear you scream? <laughs> I think maybe you probably just not noticed. It's not like there's a singer on stage, mm-hmm. but I think like that recent thing we went to, there was uh, there was vocals in some of the songs. Oh gosh, didn't even recognize it. Yeah, it's oh. uh, so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. let's talk about minute number 19 of yeah. The Godfather. what you got? This Forget is uh, kind of like part, was it like three of four? Minute three out of four of Geary and Mikey What's talking? <laughs> Geary, yeah, part one. Right? There's like, it's like a four-minute scene. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. the second half. Scene lit. Um, to do a recap, he, he, he says he's going to talk to Mikey very bluntly. Mikey says, do it. Yeah. Episode two, he says, <laughs> episode two. Second minute, he says, "I'm going to charge you two hundred fifty thousand for the license." Yeah, they they go back and forth about Klingman being on the the license's name mm-hmm. uh, on the title, and yeah. then here we are, minute nineteen. This is Act Three of their act three. friendship. That's right, <laughs> of the development of their friendship. <laughs> uh, well, Act Three, minute nineteen. Uh, in it, Senator Geary explains that he doesn't like Mikey. <gasps> what? He doesn't like Mike. Sure he doesn't you? like his oily hair, his silk suits, or his entire fucking family. Uh, are you sure? Because I interpreted the minute very differently. Really? I thought he would, they were getting along pretty well. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> Mike Mikey permits that while they are both part of the same hypocrisy, mm-hmm. that uh, it doesn't apply to his fucking family. Mm. I don't think Mike Michael replies with that language it's implied yeah <laughs> um it's funny how i, I we are when the senator it, says your whole fucking family yeah Oof. it um it just made me aware of i feel like there's not a lot of cursing in the movie considering how much there could in be in the whole trilogy you mean yeah yeah i, think I don't know if right. that was just because it was the 70s so they were less likely to do it i mean the 70s or the 50s. Well, it was the 1970s when they made the movie. Yeah. Because, you know, you look at, like, Goodfellas, and that's, like, 
every other word out of their mouth is the is the f bomb and that took place in the 70s that took place in the 50s and and, and you know on. 50s through 70s so huh. uh, anyway it, wait just, are you saying that filmmakers in the 70s regardless of the era of the film were less likely to use yes profanity? i feel like they were huh. oh yeah things really opened up just yeah, the more think, loose society has gotten yeah i think that's the case huh um oh yeah, I don't recall any. I know Sonny uses a goddamn a lot. Yeah, I feel like they say son of a bitch yeah. like a bunch of times. But mm-hmm. like, does Waltz curse? That seems like Waltz Not, should totally. Yeah, or, I don't or think Or McCluskey he, should totally be cursing. I think Waltz says, "Don't you get the hell out of here?" Yeah, that's probably that. I don't think he uses. He does F-bombs. say best piece of ass. Uh, that's true. No, he was talking about the uh, cartoons father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> but he says he had them all over the world. He doesn't say like <laughs> I fuck girls all over the world. Yeah, he's yeah. talking about the ownership of mules and donkeys. He was talking about. <laughs> yeah, tough episode for you to uh, for you to edit with all the uh, profanity already. Oh my but, gosh, could we go back and reinterpret Walt's scene as if he's referring instead of the act an actress that Johnny Fontaine stole a, a, a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> right, she was the best band. Just to show you, I'm not hard, hard. Because he's not all already, already on this horse theme. So you think it was like he was going for like? Because but he did. Did he give the horse acting lessons, singing lessons, and dancing lessons? Did you ever see Mister Ed? <laughs> right, and he's in the film business. Yeah, Come maybe. On. One yeah. talking horse. You can make more money with one talking horse <laughs> than you can with fifty guys with with guns. <laughs> Come on, what did I teach you? What did I send you to college to get stupid? When you asked me if Johnny could be in this picture, I said nay. <laughs> <laughs> now you get the hay out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of works. Uh, well, you know what? We're right? going to go back and re-examine that scene. And, and uh... <laughs> Oh, and then Johnny, could, it's actually really funny we're talking about this because I did want to reference the scene. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, yeah, does it have the same significance? Yeah, Johnny, and then comes along Johnny Fontaine with his olive oil voice and his guinea charm. And a handful of oats. A handful of oats. And his, uh, <laughs> fancy spurs. Sh- shined up saddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to check it out. Okay, check it out. <laughs> check them out, Phil. Well, um, I feel like we really have to break down the, the dialogue Let's in break this. it down. Let's break it down. So I guess we start at the top, right? Let's do it. I think it's funny how Michael asks the question, why would I ever consider paying more than $20,000 for the license? Yeah. Why would he he ask that when he knows the answer is he's being being bullied? Well, maybe he wants to see what the... is the is the senator just going to be like, well, there's service fees and handling and? But, why, he, but he knows it's he knows he's being what's the term he's uh, he's being squeezed right. What, what what would does he does he expect the senator to? Say, what, what information will Mikey get from the senator's response that could help him? Well, maybe, but it puts the senator uh, it weakens the senator because. It weakens the senator because he, by making the senator explain himself and say, like, well, I'm shaking you down. Like, it makes it seem more, by putting it in the middle of the room, it's kind of almost like making the senator face the fact that he's a crook. But didn't we talk about that in in a previous minute, about having more guys in the room? Right. Which could be considered a weaker move because you need that backup. The senator doesn't even blink. He said, because I intend to squeeze you. So if that was Mikey's intent, it did not work. Senator just came straight out and, and well, said it. And not only that, then he went into his racist tirade. It didn't work in the sense that it threw him off his game. But mm-hmm. what he did was give Mikey information, which is a weak. That's a weakness move. If the, the senator could just been like, "Well, that's my business." And totally shut Mikey down. But the fact that he felt cocky enough or confident enough to say, well, that's because I'm, you know, I don't like you. And it, it, it's showing, it's telling Mikey that he's doing it because of personal reasons, not business reasons. And so, and it's letting him know that basically the guy is corrupt 
And that if he's corrupt about that, he might have other things in his, he might have other skeletons in his closet that could be used as leverage against him. Man, I think, I think you're, uh, heir, just, I'm just you're heir the to the Corleone throne, the Corley throne. <laughs> wow, that's very good. I think Ooh, you're right. Thanks. I mean, it, well, yeah. it also could just be the, 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 that could be something that isn't necessarily right in the story, but it could also be like, well, we want to establish that this guy's crooked. And oh, so we'll yeah. have him, and also we want to yeah. show how disrespectful he is. So we need a yeah. we need a setup for him to talk about how much he dislikes Mike. Yeah, that's true. It Whereas if Mike were to just say, "Well, I'm not paying it," and I would appreciate yeah. it if you were to do it personally. Yeah, like, it could serve both purposes. Yeah, because I I think Mikey does get some information. Yeah. there. Yeah, I wonder how he uses that. Does that? Is it the senator's arrogance that's revealed that plants to see that? Oh, we could. We can trick this guy into doing something dumb. Yeah, like he's very brash, right? So we can we can get him. He might be he might be not because of his arrogance. He might not be uh, like being as low key as he mm-hmm. as he should be about his. This, keep your let always let your enemies underestimate. No, I don't remember how it got out. Said, <laughs> the senator says what he wants, but not what he needs. Mm, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it does make me wonder, though, how, like, I'm assuming that the, I think we might have touched upon this last week, but the senator has presumably dealt with mobsters before? Yeah. Or was he, was he, is he part of the old school that Mm -hmm. was, uh, that was basically like the cowboys who were running Las Vegas until the mob came in and... I guess so. I mean, he seems yeah. to know what he's doing. Right. You see, to me, it seems like he's been through this before. So you Although think, he... You think, like, other people have just gone along with his payments? Yes, or, or broker or negotiated them yeah. down. And maybe that's a... Right. Just kind of a common way of doing business. Mm-hmm. It, it is... Uh, when the senator comes out and says all that stuff, to me, what's shocking is he, he admits, he says, I intend to squeeze you. Yeah. And I think someone nowadays would not be so bold to verbally say that because yeah. most likely someone's re- being recorded. They're being recorded. <laughs> yeah, he probably wouldn't even been in the same room. Right. Which well, is funny because we'll see in a future minute. He's he says, "Don't contact me again." Yeah. I wonder if he has regrets about revealing how his plan. He's like, "Oh, maybe I said too much." Well, it also might be the fact that he is in the headquarters of a gangster so mm-hmm. it's not like Mikey's yeah. gonna be look I was you know I was arranging a special deal with him and yeah. he you know so it'd be tough to it would be, they're in a kind of mutually assured destruction <laughs> kind of situation where if he were to if he if Mikey were to reveal about the senator it would also cause blowback on Mikey yeah. so I think you remember in the last minute when they took all those pictures and yeah. with the odd yeah. handshakes yeah, yeah. I think Mikey should should get a copy of them of Geary and Mikey shaking hands with the plaque. You can barely see Mo Green's et- name etched out, <laughs> uh, but blow it up really big and put a big caption like a, like a 1950s meme, yeah. and have it say, "I intend to squeeze you, Senator," <laughs> and then Senator Geary, like a quotation from him. God, oh, because he means squeeze his hand <laughs> when he's shaking it. <laughs> That's how it can be interpreted. <laughs> I intend to squeeze you when I give you a big hug. Yeah, oh, that's how he gets away with it. No, 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 no. I meant I squeeze you as in welcome to Nevada. <laughs> so, uh, so did you want to keep going? Th- so, do you want to keep going through the lines? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he says, I intend to squeeze you. I don't like your kind. So, it's not clear to me. <laughs> you, you just said that. The senator reveals to Mikey that he's doing it for personal reasons. Yeah. But I disagree. I think he's doing it for... It's not like if Mikey were white and from Nevada, he wouldn't be squeezing him. He might? I don't think so. I don't think you just like wake up and say, I don't like him. I'm going to charge him 250 grand. Well, it could be that the previous owners were white guys, and now that these Italians are moving in, I think you underestimate people's uh, racism. I'm really surprised. Oh, no, but I, but I think the greed, I think the financial greed is probably stronger than the race. It seems like a big jump to go from, I'm this clean-cut politician that's going to just rubber stamp all the licenses and not take my the cut oh. to, wow, I'm going to charge you 250 grand because you're Italian. I'm not saying they're not. Obviously, he's racist. But I, I got the impression that 
he's saying, I intend to squeeze you. I don't like your kind. He, it's kind of adding that. He's not saying, he's not really, he, even though he's saying it, I don't think he means that I'm doing this only hmm. because you're racist. Maybe he's because trying to Italian. sell it that way. Yeah, because you're Italian. Yeah. I think he's trying to sell it that way, but I'm sure he's been making money off of all these deals. I'm sure he's making money on it, but maybe maybe he's not, you know, he's asking for like 10 times, the more than 10 times the amount of the license. So maybe yeah. other people have just been like, you know. And maybe if he had said the license will cost you a hundred thousand, Mike, you would have just been like, "All right, I'll look." You know, that seems like a reasonable, mm-hmm. like you know, uh, finder's fee to broker the deal. Yeah, but uh, but I could also see him being like, "Well, I don't like these Italians coming coming mm-hmm. here, and I want to discourage them, so I'm going to." Oh, so you think he's overcharging them in the hopes that Michael does not do it, so that he can pack, sell the license to someone else, a white person. Um. Hmm. Well, and where, and I guess also in a way to discourage future, like, yeah, like we did, like if you're going to work with them, that guy hates Italians. He will charge you through the nose. Yeah. For yeah. it, but uh, I mean, obviously he's crooked. Yeah. So it's 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 hard to say. Mm-hmm. We don't know exactly what his, uh, how crooked he is. Yeah. Up until this point. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, he's clearly, I think by how bl- bluntly, he's how openly, frankly, he's speaking to Mikey, it's clear he's been through this yeah. before. I think <laughs> I think to us, living in 2016, I don't know where I got that from, <laughs> um, living in the 21st century and mm-hmm. uh, having grown up w- where we did in the suburbs of New York, I think... It, their prejudice against Italian people seems so like, like a thing that doesn't even exist anymore. Mm-hmm. The way the way other, and I guess that's the way America goes. Like each wave of immigrants mm-hmm. discriminates against the wave. So you and I grew yeah. up in an area that had a lot of Jewish people, a lot of Italian people, a lot of Irish people. These are groups that were, were traditionally discriminated mm-hmm. against, mm-hmm. and so. Um, yeah, I wonder if uh, I'd be curious to talk to a Jewish person who like went to high school with us and see if they felt any racial prejudice. Yeah. So. Yeah. And maybe I'm just being uh, naive, thinking yeah, Italians don't sure. face don't face prejudice today. Yeah. Yeah. But I know uh, our Latin scholar Pete Carucci yeah. would say that Italians do face racism nowadays. Hmm. And I don't know. I I well, I, I, I accept his point of view. But from my point of view, it's hard to compare that to racism that Hispanics and blacks experience. Right. Right. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. Although when I think about it, uh, Tony Consiglio, our former guest of the show, uh, when he moved to Indiana, he was him being a someone of Italian descent was considered very exotic. Wow. So like, you know, uh, so mm-hmm. I can see that. Like people are like, oh, you're like Tony Soprano. You know Yeah, I mean? and that's so, that's what that's what yeah. that scholar Peter Carucci says it's always a connection to the mob. Yeah, and I guess like like you said, us growing up, we knew a lot of Italian people, so yeah. we knew what hard working, upstanding people they were. Mm-hmm. Whereas the if your only exposure is what you see on TV, then yeah, I guess that would be the case. Yeah, yeah so, makes sense. I, I so speaking of which, mm-hmm. I learned today that Lee Strasberg, Hyman Roth himself Polish, born in Poland. Polish, look at that. So uh, no wonder we have such a strong wow. half affinity for uh, for, yeah. uh, for Iron Roth, and no wonder we do such good impressions. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I intend to squeeze you. <laughs> and why our Don. mom, who's a hundred percent Polish, uh-huh. is the one who got us into Iron That's Roth. Right. So yeah. enjoy. <laughs> I intend to squeeze you dollar for dollar. <laughs> I intend to squeeze your small potatoes. <laughs> um, small license fee for you. It'll be a smaller fee. <laughs> what else you got? I got a few more. But well, is, there more, is there more dialogue? You, oh, there's you definitely to... more dialogue. Uh, I intend to squeeze you. Uh, I'll do business with you, you but seats. I despise your masquerade. I love that line. I mean, this, it's so clear. He's... He's being hip, a hypocrite. Yeah, I mean, what, it's almost comical, right? I guess that's how most people when they're really? raving hypocritically. I mean, is is he for real? <laughs> people don't say that anymore. I wanted to say that. Really? I've been saving that all week. <laughs> 
are you for real? Did you hear it recently somewhere? Or? No, no, I just made it up that I've been saving it up all week. Oh, oh no, but I mean, so you have not heard, you didn't just hear it No, somewhere. I just I just said it, but it's, I'm just stunned. It's like, yeah. It seems like, how could someone do that and mean what they're saying? I guess the, I guess <laughs> these days, especially, we're, I feel like there's so many politicians where you're like, are they really trying to say that that's their position? Given like, are they really trying to claim A when the way they behave is totally B? Like, oh yeah, it seems you know, uh, you know, it's it's disgusting now. But yeah. you know, but that's a public. When politicians speak and make those statements, it's public and it's it's politics. I kind of feel like why would Geary has already told him he's that he's going to break the law and squeeze Mikey yeah. and overcharge. We already already d- demonstrated his, yeah. his racist views. Why all of a sudden uh, claim to be this upright citizen? Well, or maybe I guess he maybe he really does believe it that the white people should I own think he and operate it. Nevada, and so he he doesn't he thinks it's I guess he thinks it's okay to do that. Yeah, he doesn't see it as crooked because it's against Italians. Yeah, the end. Yeah, the 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 end justifies yeah. the means. Like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's racist. Welcome to humanity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it just seems so clear that he's being a hypocrite. Yeah, I guess that's uh, the thing. Other people's hypocrisies are always obvious, but when you're yeah. when you're yourself doing it, it doesn't yeah. seem hypocritical to you. It seems totally consistent. Yeah. I have a consistent yeah. <laughs> worldview that you might think is even hypocritical, yeah. but you know. So yeah, huh? Um, yeah, interesting. So you so you're saying you think they are part of the same hypocrisy? You agree with Mike? You agree with well, the mobster who says that they are both part of that? The, they're the really the same thing. Well, at this stage. Mikey is trying to make inroads into legitimate businesses. Mm-hmm. So I think at this point, they are the same. They're, they are a part of the same hypocrisy. But previously, the Corleones back in New York, they weren't trying to pass themselves off as legitimate. They were like, we are a crime family. That's what we do. And right? to some extent, I mean, they did have the olive oil company as like a oh, cover, yeah. but they kind of yeah. have to do that for, yeah. you know, for tax purposes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jenko is like, listen, yeah. you gotta. <laughs> uh, I, I wrote in my notes, uh, all in all in capital letters. Is Senator Geary as naive as K? <laughs> no one's that naive. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Andrew. Now who's being naive? Yeah. Well, the, one of the questions I wrote down, and this is kind of based on what you just said, did Vito Corleone ever have to was he ever in a situation like this where someone was blatantly disrespecting him but for the sake of With whatever the racist language or racist the language whatever he was calling him a criminal or whatever okay was there was and did he how did he handle such i'm sure a he's been someone tried to squeeze him financially fanucci yeah yeah so i'm sure that stuff happens all the time in the right. world of in that kind of world but oh boy the racist stuff i i wonder well, I mean, well, it almost don't... seems like a kind of like because we're used to thinking of the Godfather as being like the like one, but clearly he had he had some grudge against people who were the the Pezzo Fizantes yeah. pulling the strings. So yeah. he probably did have to deal with a similar type of thing, like maybe when he's getting a building permit for something or mm-hmm. you know whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah. All of a sudden, your concrete license mm-hmm. uh, expired. Right. That's why I think kind of the 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 flashback scenes in Godfather Two are are kind of like romanticized mm-hmm. because we never we always see everyone who young Vito uh, you know takes down. It seems we never see a, an, an innocent victim. We never see the mm-hmm. owners of the rug that gets stolen who are yeah. like, oh no, our rug's stolen. Although, yeah, no. it's a nice Lebowski crossover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did, did you know? We'll get there in that scene, but yeah. I, I definitely noticed how how that rug had tied the <laughs> tied the room together. <laughs> it really ties the room together. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's just your <laughs> point of view. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we only see the Don, we only see Vito dealing with, um, with bad guys, bad guys, and we always guys. see him being treated with, with respect. Mm-hmm. 
Like, even Fenucci doesn't treat him... Even Fenucci treats him with some degree of respect. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, yeah. So we never... We don't get to see... We don't have to see the messiness that comes with, yeah. you know, Mikey having to be... To go legitimate or whatever. We're seeing Mikey in situations that it's hard to imagine that Don would have behaved any differently. In, yeah. Even though, you know, he's supposedly the, the golden age. I'd love to see that band leader scene... With Luca Brazzi, Don Corleone, and a band leader. If they ever do. Yeah. Although, I don't know. I don't think I want to see it. No? You want to leave it left well, up to your imagination? One thing I've and learned... That's why he signed the contract. <laughs> one thing I've learned from doing Star Wars podcasts is that many times when we are we are presented with something that we've had a lot of years to imagine, it's like disappointing. Mm. Mm-hmm. And plus, coming up with something that's going to satisfy everyone's version of yeah. it, yeah, I think will be uh, it yeah. will be a tough sell. Leave it, leave it to your imagination. Oh, it, the only reason I want to see it is if it's substantially different than the way Mikey tells it. Mm, okay, because then that would give you information that Mikey is telling a kind of cleaned up version of it. Yeah, that either he was told or he's the one cleaning yeah. it up for K. Like maybe they just went and beat him up. And then, mm-hmm. like, this story kind of evolved over time where it's this cool, you know, ice yeah. ice water running through his veins kind of thing. <laughs> your brains are the, con- you know, your brains are your signal. Wait a minute, how does it go again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'd be funny. Don't if you- call it all. <laughs> It'd be great if the original was nothing at all, like the story that's being told now. Yeah. They, didn't, they weren't even in the room. It was all done through certified mail. Or the, and the, the band leader totally wanted to fire Johnny, and they're like, oh, "We gotta, we gotta come up with a way to spin this so it yeah. doesn't." <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's all for Johnny's sake to yeah. keep his ego. Uh, <laughs> yeah, boosted, that would right? that would feed your ego. <laughs> I guess that would feed your ego. Yeah, because he was so valuable. The band leader didn't want to release him. Yeah. And now I guess he has another story. He has two stories to tell. He's so unpopular among employers that a, you, if you want to fire him, you have to you, you get a gun to your head. Or b, yeah. if you want to, if someone wants you to hire him, they kill your your horse. Yeah, there's no easy ins or outs in this guy. Oh, and if you if you leave Johnny to his own devices, he'll uh, he'll steal your donkeys. Don't forget. <laughs> Speaking of which, wait one more thing. It would be funny if then there was a scene later on where. Where Johnny was like, I, I, I can get a better deal over at a different studio, but Fultz won't let me out of the contract. Oh, like, oh Johnny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit, I am a band leader, it turns yeah. out. Oh, man, we have so much to say about The Godfather these, these days, don't oh, we? A little too much to say. <laughs> well, what do we have coming up in the second half, then? <laughs> Oh, we talk quite a bit more about Senator Geary. We get into uh, some, some uh, what do you call it, social science behind uh, uh, Michael Corleone's alleged mental illness. That's right. We discuss Al Pacino's his... insights. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of standing items. We talk about the Godfather newsletter. Mm-hmm. We talk about the musical. We talk about Garbage Pail Kids, more crazy labels. Get oh, it's in chaos. But here we are. So go to godfatherminute.com slash support and you can hear uh, that right now if you want to. Yeah, you should go there. No! <laughs>